morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. And if you're watching this YouTube video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel. For the newcomers, my name is Diddy, walking and talking about Bitcoin blockchain and live today again. Today, I'm going to talk about um, this thing that everybody is talking about institutional investors and BlackRock with an ETF entering the Bitcoin beautiful universe that we have built as normal people. Is this okay or is this not okay? I'm going to share my opinion and of course I'm also very curious to hear your opinion down below in the comments. So give the video already a thumbs up and already leave a comment what your opinion is about this whole Black uh, Rock show. Now. My opinion is very clear. I'm in Bitcoin since 2013, guys, when I started mining Bitcoin. And my goal for Bitcoin was uh, to make the world a more honest place where everyone in the world could access a monetary system in a way that it was not centralized, so decentralized. And decentralized means that there is not one single entity that has full control over the whole monetary system. Now, if we now analyze BlackRock, it's exactly the opposite. A BlackRock is a very centralized entity that controls almost the whole world, together with State Street and Vanguard. Those three companies are almost the owners of shares of every company that you all, that you know in your life. So, give you an example. For example, let's say you would go. Yeah, I'm going to walk through the forest, so the image could be going a little bit dark. Maybe I need to make it a little bit more clear like this. Let's say, for example, you want to go on a holiday. So the first thing you do is you go to Google to search for beautiful places. They own a part of Google. Then on Google you will bomb with ads from travel agencies. They own a part of those travel agencies. And then those travel agencies will make you book flights at an airplane uh, company. And those are also owned by those same three con uh, uh, companies. A huge part of all the shares of these companies belong to BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street. And then with an airplane you fly into the beautiful country that you need to go to, to visit a beautiful hotel. And probably when it's an international chain, yes, a part of that chain is owned by those three uh, companies. And so on and so on and so on. So, BlackRock is able to determine what news you will see, what radio you will listen, which podcast will be shown to you, which YouTube video you will see, and have also all the interest to show you what they want you to see, because that is how they make money on the other part of the game. So, very centralized, completely the opposite of Bitcoin. Now the question is, do we want something so centralized having power in Bitcoin? My answer is no, of course not. Bitcoin should be for the people, because we created it as people to disrupt the current monetary system and the complete central banking system. So, because that system has not been working, it has been bailed out every time again and again. In 2008, 2009, that huge bailout led into creation of Bitcoin. And why? Because Bitcoin could not be bailed out. It doesn't need bailouts because Bitcoin has a limited supply of 21 million Bitcoins completely fixed in an algorithm that will take to the year of 2140 for the last Bitcoin to be mined. So it's the best monetary system out there that is honest for every single people on the earth. If you're rich or poor, you can access Bitcoin. So now <coughs> Bitcoin is turning again into this rich man's tool if BlackRock launches an ETF and all these other millionaires and billionaires want to get access to Bitcoin through BlackRock, then again it becomes a rich man's tool. And it is not any more the peer-to-peer -peer cash that it was intended to be for all the normal people in the world. So that would mean that if they get more access to Bitcoin, at the end, again, Bitcoin will not be serving the goal that was intended to serve give access to everyone in this beautiful world to Bitcoin. Because the more purchasing power these huge institutional investors have, the more Bitcoins they will buy. And of course, we are lucky that OGs like me, okay, I consider myself an OG, being in the space in 2013, and other ones already bought a shitload of Bitcoin, and we won't be selling them. 
But many people have weak hands, and these people, these companies like BlackRock, they have full control also, uh, and they have a lot of shares also in exchanges. So yes, they will be able to manipulate the price, in my opinion, and uh, make weak hands sell into the strong hands. And the strong hands are, of course, the ones that play the game and that organize the whole game, so they know what the price will do. So for me, I just don't understand why there is so much happiness in this whole industry now that BlackRock might enter the game. I think BlackRock and all those others were also uh, behind the whole uh, pandemic. Who behind it? Because the owners of BlackRock, and that's what most people probably don't know, are a lot of foundations. And the owners of uh, the foundations, these foundations are for example George Sower Foundation, Linda and Bill Fish Foundation. These foundations own again a huge part of BlackRock and Vanguard and State Street. So in the end, who is in control? Those people that wanted you to be vaccinated and all that stuff, you know. It's a, it's a simple one and one, it's two. So do we want those people that already created fear by influencing media, by influencing countries, and then just to sell more of their products, and that product was at that moment vaccinations uh, to the people by manip manipulating the media. Do we want those people to be now in control of a little bit of Bitcoin? I don't think so. In my opinion, it's not a good thing. It is a good thing for the Bitcoiners that want to become filthy rich probably, uh, because yes, it will influence the price if billions of dollars will flow into the Bitcoin market and start to buy up Bitcoins. Yeah, of course, that's good for the price. But then again, um, at the end, Bitcoin might, because of the greed of the normal people, again, yeah, the, all of us, because of the greed <coughs> for dollars and euros, because that's brainwashed into our brain that we need to have dollars and euros, because of that greed for that, at the end, these huge companies will buy all these bitcoins from us they will be in full control of bitcoin again they will use bitcoin for international transactions or even bit to be make it a new world reserve currency and by that not give access to the normal people again so the normal people again need to come up with a new system that will do the job that bitcoin did so it's not like the end of everything because if they would take bitcoin away from us yes we will always come with something new and create something new but will there again be an egoless person that creates something new completely decentralized that doesn't want to be known like satoshi we don't know we don't know at the moment we have bitcoin we have the power and we have the control uh, at the normal people on bitcoin and in my opinion we shouldn't be giving away this beautiful thing into the hands of again that one percent of the rich people that wants to have full control and create a big, let's say it, social credit system tied to a universal monetary system and by that like enforce all their powers onto the people and to do that, to let them do what they want them to do. And we saw a small example of course in the last pandemic. It was very clear to see how a small group of people could influence the whole world and bring them to fear to do certain stupid things that they would have never done before like lockdowns in a house, face masks everywhere on the streets, all those stupid things. So I don't think it's a good step, guys. But again, if you want to be filthy rich, yeah, it's good. But maybe the other side could be we as a community creating a shitload of adoption, making sure that every little penny goes into it. Like if all of us worldwide, all the people that have bank accounts just would empty those bank accounts and put all that money into Bitcoin, it would have the same effect. But only the difference is that then the effect is for you and me. And our money goes into our Bitcoin and Bitcoin becomes our powerful tool to decentralize the world and to take the power back to us, to the people. But if we give away this Bitcoin again to those filthy rich companies, we will be handing over that full control on something very beautiful that was created to exactly escape those centralized entities. Bitcoin was created to escape it not to hand it over to them. I think it's the same thought we did with gold, and I hope that we're not gonna make the same mistakes that we did with gold. Because also gold, it started fine, it started beautiful in the hands of the normal people, but then we started to give it away to the banks because we felt afraid that somebody would steal it. So then it went into the banks, and then the banks started to use it, and even made gold the backup for the currencies at the dollar at that moment. And in the end, they took full control. And now normal people, 
don't have gold anymore. But who has gold? All the governments and all the countries in the world, they have a shitload of gold and they took it away from the normal people. So we should not let that happen to Bitcoin. Guys, uh, that was everything for today. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to your channel, hit the notification bell, leave a comment. What do you think about my story today? Is this good or bad BlackRock? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow again. Bam.